All right, we're going to focus back on consumer confidence and GDP with our guest, Ataman Zildaram, economist and director of business cycles and growth research at the Conference Board. Ataman, as we were saying, GDP growth revised from 3.5% to 3.9%. Combined with the previous quarter, it's been a very strong six months of growth, the strongest since 2003. What's, what's pushing this forward? Right, a lot of what's behind this revision upwards is uh, consumer spending, which is good news for the economy going into the holiday uh, spending uh, season. Okay, well, before we get to consumer spending, can we determine from this rise in GDP that the Fed has done its job, that the Fed's policies have been working? Well, it's really hard to say uh, without looking at long-term data how successful the Fed has been. And I'm sure this is a topic that's going to be debated for a long time. But uh, we do seem uh, to, to see that uh, the policies are starting to pay off. The U.S. Deco economy has turned a corner. And uh, a lot of leading indicators, including consumer confidence, are showing that uh, more of this will continue. Do you think that this now supports the case that the Fed will raise rates sooner rather than later, the strong revision upwards of GDP growth? Well, the Fed is going to look at a lot of different indicators before they decide to raise rates. Um, mostly uh, what they will be looking at is labor markets. And as the unemployment rate starts to come down and as they determine that the unemployment slack or the slack in the labor markets uh, is lessening, they will begin to uh, shift into raising rates, which will, we think will probably come uh, towards the middle of next year, if not earlier. Well, there are a lot of things going against the U.S. economy and future growth. For example, we've got the Fed winding down QE3. The bond purchases are over. We have continued weakness in the Eurozone. We have sanctions with Russia over the Ukraine situation, a recession in Japan, and slowing growth from China. So is there enough to maintain this momentum? Well, uh, one of the reasons behind pulling back on QE and shifting gears is the resilience of the U.S. economy. And that's what we see in the leading economic indicators, which are showing upward trends. Uh, and uh, we think that the fundamentals of the U.S. economy relative to other economies around the world is stronger, leading to um, good but maybe not great growth going forward. All right, well, one of the things that was encouraging was that consumer spending, which of course makes up 70% of GDP, was revised upwards. But interestingly enough, according to your survey, consumer confidence has taken a hit in November. How do you reconcile these uh, diverging data points? Well, month to month, the index can zigzag around. But what we do is really look at uh, the trend over the last several months. So if you look at the uh, Consumer Confidence Index, it has reached into expansion territory, and it remains there above the level 80. And uh, even though these uh, zigzags look like consumer confidence is not faring that well, uh, we're encouraged by the fact that it's not a very, very sharp uh, downward trend. But why are they feeling down about the economy? We've got lower gas prices. It's the holiday shopping season. It's towards the end of the year. There's, there's a a change in, in government. Why are consumers not feeling positive? Looking at the consumer confidence survey, uh, we found that uh, the uh, consumer's short-term outlook has uh, taken a, a dip, um, as well as their outlook on the job uh, market, the labor market. Mm -hmm. And uh, despite that, their uh, expectations about uh, incomes haven't really changed. So overall, uh, in the index, we see a slight dip, uh, but it, it's not enough to change the upward trend. Well, the job uh, market has been a concern. And as you've said, uh, your indices that measure that are down. We've got President Obama changing immigration policies and presumably allowing more workers. How is that going to impact the outlook for uh, consumer confidence with regards to job prospects and raising income? So immigration policy is uh, more related to long-term developments in the economy. And uh, when we look at the medium and long term, we see slow growth for the U.S. economy as well as other mature economies. A lot of that is because the demographics are not supporting higher growth. So an immigration policy could uh, support to offset some of those uh, long-term slowdown for the U.S. economy. I don't think that on, in the near term it's going to have a major impact 
on the short-term indicators. And very quickly, what is your growth forecast for the next quarter? Our growth uh, forecast is still uh, about 1.9%, so we won't see as strong growth as uh, in the first couple of quarters of, uh, of, the, of the year. All right, 1.9% for the fourth quarter. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Ottoman Ozildirim, economist and director of Business Cycles and Growth Research at the Conference Board.